okay, let's uh, take the best test ever. Uh, first, this guy des describes the, the motion of a particle, meaning that um, it tells me its position at any time t. Okay, so it's gonna look something like this, because I, I know it's a, a cubic. Um, and I know cubics look something like that. So uh, it's gonna be at a negative position at some times, and, and then it'll be at a positive position sometimes, it'll be a negative position sometimes. Uh, the first question is, what's the velocity of the function? What's the velocity of this particle? Well, it's here at this time, and it's here at this time. The time in between is how much time went by, so the slope between those two points would be its average velocity. But we can find instantaneous velocity using calculus. At any time t, I can tell you its velocity by taking its derivative and plugging in t. That's our velocity function, the derivative of the position function. Uh, when is it moving in a positive direction? Uh, well, what does that mean? It means, it, as it, like, how would you know you're moving in a positive direction? First, you have to choose a direction to be positive and one to be negative. Uh, how will you know you're moving in the positive direction? When you are moving towards positive distances, right? Well, that's what's happening here. It's moving towards positive distances here. Here it stops moving towards positive distance, starts moving towards more negative distances. And here it, it stops moving in a negative direction, starts moving in a positive direction. You can see what I'm talking about here. Positive slopes mean a positive direction. Negative slopes, negative velocities mean a negative direction. So we'll take our derivative to figure out where those breaks are, where it stops moving in one direction and it starts moving in the other. So then it equals 0, divide by 3. Factor would be t minus 2 and t minus 8. So t equals 2 and t equals 8. That must be those times when it stops right, and starts moving in a different direction. So for positive, it must be from 0 to 2. If you said negative infinity, that works too. But realistically, we would start measuring time at time 0, usually. Um, so that would be good. Negative infinity works all right. Uh, and then from 8 on towards wherever, whenever, it's moving in a positive direction. Between 2 and 8 must be where it's moving in a negative direction with negative velocities. If we're not sure, we can uh, plug in a value into the derivative, okay? Um, but I know something about, um, let's see. Um, anyway, I, I know something about um, cubic equations that, that its graph uh, is going to look like this. Its end behavior is going to be like this. It might kind of go up and down in the middle, but it's going to go from the bottom left to the top right. I know about its end behavior. So I know that this, it must have a positive interval, then a negative, and then a positive. That's how I know these are positive and this is negative. Um, where does it change direction? That just means where it stops going positive and starts going negative and vice versa. So it must, at time 2 and 8, change its position, or change its uh, direction. OK, next we're going to find the limit here. As x approaches infinity, we have learned that uh, the bigger x gets, the more this doesn't matter. Minus 3 is silly when you multiply negative 2 times 800 million bajillion, and you subtract 3. That doesn't really matter. So it's more like it's negative 3x over negative 2x, right? When this is 100 million billion, 100 million billion. I think that's 100 million billion. And this is 100 million billion. 100 million billion. Well, then the 100 million billions cancel each other out, right? We're, we're considering it to be just negative 3 times 100 million billion in the numerator because adding 1 to that. It's just so silly. Adding one is so tiny compared to that. It doesn't really matter. And so does minus three doesn't matter either. So it's more like it's negative three over two. The bigger the x gets, the bigger it gets, right, towards infinity, the closer this function gets to the ratio negative three over negative two, or three halves.
positive three halves. I was telling you in class, it really is uh, good. The setup that I was seeing um, for most everybody, and that's not something I see every year. Um, so we, we know what a rectangular solid is. It's just a box, right? It's a box, it has a square base. So I know that whatever this is, so that's what that is. Okay, but whatever I want to call this, base, uh, what is it talking about height? I don't know, we could, we could call this height if we wanted. You could draw your picture a little bit so it, it looks more like that. It doesn't really matter, right? This is x, this is x. We could call this h. We could call that length or whatever we want to call it. It wants to know all the dimensions, so. Um, all right, well. Uh, it's talking about volume. We want to maximize the volume, so we have to write that equation that involves the, the, the thing that we want to maximize or minimize, in whatever the case may be. Um, and it has to be a, an equation that, has, that gives the volume for what's it talking about. It's talking about the dimensions of the rectangular solid. So given the dimensions of the rectangular solid, I should be able to calculate the volume. And that would just be x times x times h. That would be x squared times h. Okay. I should anticipate taking the derivative of this because we want to maximize it. We want to find the maximum of this function. We need to take the derivative and find where the maximum is. That's where we find a zero slope, right? Um, its surface area is 256 meters. Right? They're telling us that because this is in terms of two different variables. So we always need it to be in terms of one variable at some point. I need to make all these substitutions at some point uh, in order to make this problem work. So. 256 is the surface area. That's what I get when I add up this area and this area and this back side here and this side over there, the top here and the bottom there, right? So it wouldn't take long for me to figure out that x squared would give me this area here. There's two of those. x times h would give me one of these, and there's four of those. So that would, whatever 2x squared plus 4x times h uh, you know, whatever x and h are, they need to come out to be 256 altogether. Okay, and uh, I would like to use this to make a substitution over here. I think a, h is easier to solve for in this. Like solving for x, I'd need to like do a quadratic formula or something. That'd be crazy. So I'll just solve for h. It'll be 256 minus 2x squared. All right, that'll leave me with 4xh. So I'll divide both sides by 4x, and that's what h is. So now v equals x squared times 256 minus x, 2x squared over 4x. x cancels with one of these x's. v equals x times 256 minus 2x squared uh, over 4. So v equals, let's just call it 1 fourth times 256x minus 2x cubed, right? Then we want to take the derivative of that. Um, so v prime equals 1 fourth times 256 minus 6x squared, right? And then we want to set that equal to 0. Why? Because this is telling us for any x, how much the volume is changing for that particular x, right? Uh, really, if we look at the, the volume function, ooh, it looks like uh, it's, a quad, it's, a, it's a cubic as well, but it does something more like this, okay? Um, actually, probably more something like, it looks more like this, I'll bet. Uh, so, for some value of x, we find the biggest volume right there. And what we're doing by taking the derivative and setting it equal to 0 is finding where that 0 slope is, that horizontal tangent line is. So set it equal to 0. I'm just going to multiply both sides by 4. And I have 256 minus 6x squared. Okay, And 6x squared equals 256 divided by 6x squared equals if I take out the common factor of 2, I get 128 over 3. Okay, and 
uh, take the square root of both sides. x equals, I, I would normally say plus or minus, but a negative dimension of a box doesn't make a lot of sense. The square root of 128 over 3. So uh, this x needs to be the square root of 128 over 3. Okay, that's the base. And what would the height have to be? Well, height is given by this guy right here. Excuse Okay, that was fun. Um, so we can just plug this in and uh, figure out what h is. Okay, here we go. It's kind of a big thing. All right. I kind of spent a lot of room explaining things. Let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of all that. Here we got some more room. 256 minus 2 times x squared, x is the square root of 128 over 3, that's going to be easy to square, over 4 times, that's going to be less easy to square, but this is, this is a kind of cool, um, oh no it's not, it's not cool, 128 over 3, um, okay, well if we square a square root we just get the, the thing inside the the square, and then it's inside the square root. So we get 256 minus 2 times 128 over 3 over 4 times the square root of 128 over 3. And let's see, this will become 256 minus uh, 256. 6 over 3 over 4 times the square root of 128 over 3. Um, and then when we get a common denominator here and we subtract 256 over 3, we'll get... So just go ahead and divide 512 by 4. 128. Well, look at that. 128 over 3 over the square root of 128 over 3. Um, seems like there is a, probably an easy way to solve this, but uh, it is what it is, I suppose. Yeah. Well, anyway, the, the 128 over 3 over the square root of 128 over 3 is just the square root of 128 over 3, right? Because some number divided by its own square root is the square root of that number. Like if I had uh, x over the square root of x, that's like x over x to the 1 half, and that would be x to the 1 half, right? And so like this is like x, and so the square root of that is the square root of 128 over 3. Okay, well, that's kind of interesting because for a rectangular solid that has a square base, it turns out that the third dimension also, it's the best dimension for the, the height tab, is the same dimension. So what if this is a cube? So it seems like the best three-dimensional figure for maximum volume is a cube. It turns out that that is true. And even better than uh, a cube would be uh, well, let's just cut to the chase. The best 3D figure. The best 3D shape for to maximize volume would be a sphere. Right? The best shape would be a sphere. Uh, better shape than a cube would be uh, another regular uh, polyhedron. That's uh, just a 3D figure that has all the same, like all the sides are the same shape. All the sides are regular polygons. And if I keep making a more and more sided uh, polyhedron, then the sphere is the shape that I would use. So anyway, okay, the graph of the derivative of f. Okay, let's see. Well, this is easy. There's a zero slope here, so the derivative would have a value of zero, zero slope here. The derivative would have a value of zero, zero slope here, derivative of zero. 
Uh, here we have positive slopes 